Welcome to Imaging Basics video number two, the three types of scope. My name is Kate and I'm one of the clinical educators here at Olympus OAZ. For the past 10 or so years, I've been working in the hospital and OR environment. And so I've seen a lot of different types of scopes to be used. I understand that all of these different types of scopes can definitely be a bit confusing. So this video is designed to try and help simplify the many different types of scope by categorizing them into one of three types. The three categories of scopes that we'll discuss in this video will be rod lens, fiber optic, and video scope. Let's start first with the rod lens telescope. The rod lens scope is the traditional type of telescope used in many surgeries. Rod lens telescopes are used to ascertain the clinical image during surgeries such as laparoscopy, arthroscopy, hysteroscopy, and cystoscopy. Here in front of me, I have an example of some of these different types of rod lens telescopes a cystoscope, a hysteroscope, an arthroscope, and a laparoscope. Can you see any similarities between these examples of rod lens telescopes? Well, probably the most obvious similarity is that they're all rigid. This is because they're all filled with glass rod lenses, spacers, and acromats, capable of transporting excellent quality images. Each and every rod lens is laid with precision so that the image can be relayed to the viewer without any image distortion. The precise arrangement of each lens within an Olympus telescope is patented technology and is painstakingly laid by hand in Germany. The lens system is then sealed by three stainless steel tubes for optimal durability. Each rod lens telescope also has a fiber optic bundle running from the light post to the distal tip, lighting up the surgical field. And although these rod lens telescopes come in various diameters, lengths and angles, each rod lens telescope can essentially be labelled with the same parts. An ocular, a light post, a system tube and an objective lens. A sapphire is used for the objective lens, providing optimal strength and scratch resistance. So rod lens telescopes share the same components, but are manufactured in a range of different diameters, lengths and angles, depending on their intended use. The larger the diameter of the telescope, the larger the optics which means larger rod lens scopes are typically capable of bigger and better quality images. So what does this mean from a practical perspective? This means that for more complex cases in larger cavities, you'll probably need to use a larger diameter telescope. For example, this 10 millimeter laparoscope, which would be the standard during complex lap cases. You also need to be aware of the direction of view required and how to select a telescope with an appropriately angled lens. This is especially important because, of course, the rigid scope cannot bend to accommodate different tissues and angles. So the only way your perspective into a space can be changed is through the angle of the lens or the placement of the telescope into the tissue. And a rod lens telescope on its own isn't much use, with no light and no way to digitise the picture. So don't forget that you need a camera head, light lead and tower in order to use your rod lens telescope. So once you have a top quality imaging chain in place, connect and handle all components with care. Remember that all those glass lenses are fragile. Train your theatre staff to avoid exposing telescopes to dropping, banging, bending or crushing. But if handled with care, a rod lens telescope can potentially produce an excellent quality image for years to come. It is a versatile option appropriate for many different surgeries, the workhorse of endoscopic surgery, capable of excellent image quality. So now that we've had an overview of the rod lens telescope, let's consider that for some procedures, there may be a natural orifice or passageway, which the operator can use to gain access into the cavity. Where possible, a clinician may prefer to use one of these natural entry points in order to reduce trauma to the patient tissue. This can reduce risks of bleeding, scarring, infection and pain experienced by the patient. So for some cases, it can be ideal to use these natural access points. But of course, these natural orifices are rarely in a straight line and they are often delicate tissues and mucosas, such as the airway, nasal cavity and the urethra. So you can imagine a rod lens or rigid telescope might not be suitable to access these cavities during more minor procedures especially where heavy anaesthetic is not warranted. This brings me to the second type of scope, fibre optic. Fibre optic endoscopes allow clinicians to use a flexible instrument to navigate and view patient tissues. Fibre optic scopes use a fibre optic bundle to transport the image instead of rod lenses. 
This fibre optic bundle may sound similar to the bundle that carries light in our light guides and alongside the rod lenses in our rod lens telescopes. But this fibre optic bundle is different. This bundle carries the image in these fibre scopes and is called the optic bundle. This optic bundle is highly organised or coherent. So each fibre starts and ends in exactly the same order at each end of the telescope. Unlike light bundles, optic bundles need to be organised like this, otherwise our picture would become completely jumbled. In fibre optic scopes, separate to the optic bundle, there is still a light bundle to deliver light into the surgical field. Each fibre in both the optic bundle and the light bundle of a fibre scope is made of specialised coated glass. Each tiny glass fibre is about one-tenth of the size of a strand of human hair. The glass fibres have to be thin like this so that they can be flexible and minimise trauma to the patient mucosa. But of course, these tiny glass fibres are fragile and will break with time of scope use and if twisting, excessive bending or pressure is applied to the tube. Each time one of these optic fibres breaks, a black dot appears on the endoscopic image. Being such a tiny, delicate, organised bundle, it's impossible to replace a singular broken optic fibre. And so eventually, when the black dots become too obtrusive to the image, the whole optic bundle, or the scope itself, needs to be replaced. Fibre optic imaging quality is limited. Although the scope has no broken fibres on the image that we can see, that is, you can't see any black dots on the screen, you can see that the image itself is very small and it's also lacking in resolution. So although fibre optic scopes have the benefit of being very small and flexible and gentle on tissues, they are limited in terms of the image quality that they can produce. Because of this, fibre optic scopes are typically confined to shorter cases where patient comfort is paramount, especially when it's preferred that a patient doesn't undergo heavy anaesthetic, for example, flexible cystoscopy or a difficult intubation. From a practical perspective, when using a fibre optic scope, don't forget a light source, be it a portable one or a full tower. And if your clinician prefers to eyeball, they can now go ahead with the procedure as is, or perhaps for ergonomic reasons, or they need to share the surgical image with the rest of the team in the room, they may want to attach a camera head now onto the fibre optic scope. This will digitise the fibre optic image, allowing it to be displayed on the monitor. Remember though, even if your monitor is, for example, high def or 4K, the picture will still only be of a limited quality or resolution. Refer back to your imaging chain training or imaging colleagues for more information. But for now, let's move on to the third and final type of scope being discussed in this video, the latest technology in terms of medical scope design, the video scope. Video scopes allow us to combine favourable characteristics of both the previous types of scopes, such as the gentle flexibility and tiny diameter of a fibre scope with the excellent image quality capabilities of a rod lens scope. A video scope in some cases can surpass even the image quality of a rod lens scope because a video scope allows us to digitise the image right there at the very source. So depending on the quality of the chip or chips used to digitise the image, video scope image quality can potentially be full definition right there at the lens without risking loss of image detail along the imaging chain. For example, when we connect a rod lens telescope onto a good quality camera head, such as this 4K camera head, we do indeed digitise the image right here at the camera head. But what happens if those imaging chain components prior to the camera head aren't of the best quality? What if your light supply is dull or your light guide cable is old? What about if your telescope is old, damaged or has moisture in the tube? When that happens, your resulting image quality can be jeopardised. But using a video scope allows you to eliminate these issues. A video scope allows you to wrap the first three elements of the imaging chain into one device. So your telescope, light bundle and camera head are all wrapped into one complete scope. We plug our video scope into the compatible processor and light source and power up, ready to view our subject, such as this apple. When the objective lens views the subject, the photons are reflected from the lens onto the chip's surface. The image seen by our lens is then turned into a digital signal right there at the chip. This signal is then sent via electronic wires back through the scope and all the way back to the processor for processing. This allows a stable digital signal of the image without any of the variables that occur in the glass optics of a rod lens or fibre scope. 
And being wires carrying the image signal, this means that the scope design itself can be quite variable. As long as you can fit the chip in the tip and the signal wires won't become too twisted or stretched during use, the scope itself can be completely redesigned in any number of ways to suit its intended purpose. So we can design video scopes that mimic a rod lens configuration. That way, clinicians are comfortable when using them in almost the same way they use their traditional setup, except this may be more ergonomic and more comfortable to hold. Or we could use a very small CCD chip at the tip of a flexible scope, for example, this ureteroscope, capturing the image and sending it back to the processor with much greater resolution capabilities than its fibre optic counterpart. Or we could even combine design features of a rod lens system with those of a flexible system. We could put chips in the tip with a bending section and allow all kinds of angles to be selected. For example, this dual lens 3D endo-eye videoscope, which transmits a 3D operating image for clinicians to get greater depth perception. Videoscopes are the latest in medical imaging technology, and as this technology grows, the quality and clarity of minimally invasive imaging is improving all the time. However, all of this modern technology requires a complete and compatible digital imaging chain in order for any signal to be relayed to the device user. In summary, there are many variations of endoscopes used in the medical world. To start understanding the scopes in your portfolio, it's helpful to consider the scope not only by its intended purpose and procedure, but also by its basic mechanics and function. Categorised by mechanics, the three basic types of scope used by Olympus Medical are rod lens, fibre optic and video. Each of these three types of scope has its own advantages and disadvantages and is adapted to make the procedure as practically and minimally invasive as possible whilst relying the best possible image quality. Rod lens telescopes are the gold standard of the laparoscopic world, and even though their glass lenses are potentially fragile, they are capable of transmitting a top quality image in a versatile way if handled appropriately and paired with a top quality imaging chain. Fibre optic scopes are older technology, but have stood the test of time due to their excellent flexibility, portability and minimally invasive nature. But they're only capable of relaying a limited quality image. Videoscopes are the latest technology in the world of medical endoscopy and are capable of transmitting a top quality image. The incorporation of the chip at the tip facilitates not only superb image quality, but also innovative scope design and ergonomics. As the electronics and chips get smaller and more capable of generating high quality signals, clinicians have potential to carry out more complex procedures in less invasive ways and to improve patient outcomes. So that was a quick look at the three key types of scopes. I hope you found this video interesting and useful. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact us in Medical Affairs or your product manager.